We are live. Do you know what this setup reminds me of? Actually, I'll tell you where I am in a second here. It reminds me of the OG YouTube days. You know, YouTubers sitting in their bedroom being like, okay, what's up everyone? I, I wasn't an OG YouTuber, but I think that's what they sound like. Let me show you more importantly though, now that we're on these random talks, let me show you my view of New York City, what I'm looking at. Let me do it. It's pretty incredible. What do you think? Look at this. I mean, what, what? I'm sorry, that's not my background right now, but lighting and all. All right, we are going to talk today about how in particular I balance having a full-time job, having a business to FinTech, and then also too, starting to go back to school. Yes, you heard that right. Your girl is going back to school. But before I share with you what exactly I'm going back to school for, what it entails and all of that, and the bigger question of why, Tiff? Why are you putting more on your plate? I wanna share with you a few different things that we're going to cover in this video, which I hope when you leave this video, you take away really how you can balance your time and you too can continue to upskill and level up in technology at whatever works for you, whether it be a few times a week, whether it be once a week, but really make significant changes in your ways that you are learning and balancing your time that if you want to go back to school you can if you want to take an online course you can whatever the case is all right before we get started you know what I have to say since I'm doing this old-school youtuber background hit that subscribe button give this video a like and leave in the comments what other topics you want me to cover so before we get into it though, what did I enroll in and what have I been accepted to go back to school into? So I enrolled and was accepted into George Brown's Practical AI and Machine Learning Program. So what does this entail? Well, for me, what it looks like is going back to school Monday and Tuesday night uh, from six to nine. So three hours on those two nights, which it's gonna be intense to be honest with you on top of everything else. And we're really going to, or I'm going to really dive into everything around machine learning and AI. And I picked this course for a few reasons. One being because it's hands-on. So as a builder, starting my career in tech with uh, software development and being very technical and still a very technical person today, I feel like a lot of times I have a really good grasp on machine learning, generative AI, and a lot of the different concepts within it. But as a builder at heart and inherently, I just need to get hands-on with it. And I have been doing that through different online courses and that's been wonderful. It's been working out great. But one of the things which I will cover more in this video is I know what kind of learner I am and I know what kind of environment I need to be in to really, really learn. When I see really, really, what does that mean? It means I can get to a certain point through self-learning and I get pretty far with it. But there comes a point where I need that support of a community, of a teacher, of other peers essentially to really build up that knowledge together. I'm not someone who can just learn on my own. And that's something that took me many years to uncover was that it's okay. You don't need to be, everyone's so different with their style of learning and don't try and compartmentalize yours or force your learning to be what suits others. Do what suits you best. So here we are. All right, so why machine learning and artificial intelligence? What made me want to take this course? Well, for one, as I mentioned, it's hands-on. So I'm actually coding, I'm building different things. And the other side is the business side of this. I will get to learn and really understand how these technologies can affect business, uh, businesses going forward and where they are at today. I just feel like this, these technologies are things that Although they're trending right now, they are here to stay and they're just going to be integrated further and further into our daily lives that I really want to understand the ins and outs of them. I want to be able to build with this technology and that's really what prompted me to go back to school. It's a total of a year program done in, of course, semesters. We are starting the first one in February, as I mentioned. So I will share with you my journey around this and my learnings and what I uncover. But now here's a bigger question how am I going to be able to balance all of this? I mean, it's six hours of learning weekly in class. And then I think it was, what is it? It's another few hours outside of class for take home projects, studying and working. It feels like a lot. So let me share with you some things that I'm going to implement. All right, so one thing that I always do, I mean, I've already implemented this system and it's really helped me be very functional throughout the day is I've implemented time blocking. and. This is how I look at it. So a little backstory on time blocking or how I use it anyway. So I am someone who is very anxious if I know I have a lot of tasks to do throughout the day. And what will happen is I will open up my computer, 9 a.m. comes or, you know, earlier for Tiff and Tech stuff as well. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about my day and I'm thinking, oh, I need to write this email. Oh, I need to respond back to this person. I need to walk the dog. I need to go get groceries. I need to do this. And then it starts compiling to the point where it seems my day isn't even possible. I think, how can I get through this? And I'm sure I'm not alone. This isn't unique to me. This is being an adult. It's 
kind of hard, <laughs> especially trying to manage everything. So what I have done and what I found myself doing before I implemented time blocking is with those thoughts and having this continue to pile up, what would happen is I would become almost frozen. I wouldn't feel like I could get anything done and I would just sit there overwhelmed. So what I do now with time blocking is I will literally block off hour by hour or 30 minutes, depending on the task at hand, increments of what I need to do. I'll start by saying, okay, what are the top three things? And this is very key. Don't let these three things become four things because that's very easy or become five things because that's very easy as well. And we tell ourselves that all these things need to be done. But when you take a step back, what actually needs to get done today? So what I will do is I will have my big three things that need to get done. And then what I will do is structure my days around those three things. Okay, for me, I know I am most productive, most focused in the morning. By 3 p.m., yes, I am still working, but I really need for the next hours after that, it to be simpler and easier tasks. I don't schedule meetings that are very uh, focused or intensive after 3 p.m. If I can, I will always try them in the morning or earlier in the day. And same goes with the tasks at hand. If there's a task that I really don't wanna do, I will schedule it in the morning because otherwise what I will do is my whole day, I will spend dreading it. With time blocking, it makes me feel as though I'm not going to miss something because I have literally wrote on my calendar, my personal calendar, when I have uh, my work meetings, what I need to get done at work for the day and I block it out hour by hour. The key here is though, you have to be practical. You need to block off things such as go for a walk and get your coffee or take the dog out for a walk because that still counts for time. And if you're being unrealistic by just blocking your entire day, it's going to get draining really fast. And I bring up time blocking as one of the main points to really be able to balance a full-time job with something else such as studying new technology, going back to school like myself, because if you are not structuring your day, like your work day properly, you are going to end the day so exhausted and in turn, you are not going to be able to put your attention or focus to your night course. So that's step number one, really ensure you know how you work best and when you work best. Are you a morning person? Are you a night person? Your time, you can alter your day based on when works best for you. You can, for the most part, schedule meetings. I mean, obviously there's meetings that come up and it's maybe someone else's the opposite as to when they are productive as to you are. So it's an afternoon and you're a morning person, but for the most part, you have control with time blocking to schedule out when you want to do your tasks. Here's another way though, that I can balance having a day job, being very focused and busy at that day job, and then other things in the evenings or very early mornings. One thing I, I read, and I think we've heard throughout many different kind of self-help books, but it's really true, which is, I think it was Mark Twain who said it, eat the frog first. I'm probably <laughs> saying that quote wrong. I'll have to pull it up here, what it actually is. But what essentially it means is do your most difficult tasks in the morning or whenever is best for you, which for me is in the morning. So when it comes to taking this course with machine learning and and artificial intelligence, how I plan to structure my days is I wake up very early. And right now what I do when I wake up, there are certain days that I go for my early workout classes or different things like that. But what I plan to do is also on the days that I'm not working out, early in the morning at least, is schedule in that it'll be an hour to an hour and a half of time to work on these courses. And I'm talking, these are typically at seven or I wake up around typically 5.30 in the morning. Not every morning, some mornings is 5.45, but for things like this, waking up early and then having time before work to get this work done for my courses. Now, I'm not saying this works for everyone, but what it does work for everyone or how it can work for everyone is knowing your yourself, where if you are a very early morning person like me, then maybe taking these uh, hours in the morning before you start work to study. If you are a night owl, do the same. You have all day to do your day work and then come the nighttime when you're really energized, you can focus on your course and studying. It really goes back to you have to understand how you work best and learn best. Now on that note of working best, learning best, another thing that is so key here that is crucial to bring up is do not, this is something I need to work on, but do not put unrealistic expectations on yourself. And this goes back to cramming, it goes back to kind of procrastinating where it's so, I don't wanna do any studying throughout the week and then the weekend is when I'll cram all my studying. For me, that will not work because I need at least, preferably the whole weekend to fully recover and recharge. Obviously little tasks come up here and there and there is some studying required, but for the most part, if I was to cram all my studying on top of my learning hours, meaning the course hours, onto the weekends, it, I would fail. And I know that because I've 
tried it before with other things. So for me, spreading it out in small increments throughout the week is what I know will lead to success for myself. And I think for most people too, rather than taking this massive chunk of time to try and catch up on everything. And I think there's a lot of science to back this up. I don't have facts or data right in front of me. I know I usually share a lot of different facts and data points in these videos, but um, based on the setting, going back to old school YouTube videos for this one, I don't, but I know I've read in many different places around the importance of studying and taking in information in smaller chunks versus trying to have this massive learning session, which you will probably forget most of the things you learn. All right, if you take anything away from this video, I want it to be this. I want it to be, you have your unique way of learning. Gone are the days when we go to school and you, know, you have to study a certain way, test a certain way. I mean, that's still implemented in that sense, but as an adult, now you have the freedom to choose how you want to learn and when you want to learn. So structure it when it works best for you. Identify those times. That's the first thing. Another thing that's really important is to find a person or community to hold you accountable. I mean, on one hand, you all are going to hold me accountable to my learnings because I'm going to be sharing them with you. The other side though is find a community that supports you. So whether this be an online community or an in-person community through the peers that you're taking a class with, or if you're taking an online course, maybe it's through different Slack groups, different things like that. By the way, I, I, it would just be so disappointing if I didn't shout out Takeoff here because part of Takeoff is exactly that with our unique Slack group that you can study and learn together, build those relationships, and then learn from mentors and other individuals on our platform. It's not the point of this video, but I'll link Takeoff down below. It's a company I started. Anyways, I hope you found this video super helpful and valuable. On the note of machine learning and AI and the course I am taking, what do you want me to share with you about it? Do you want me to share your weekly updates? Like what would be beneficial? Because it's essentially, we can learn together, which is kind of cool. Really cool, actually. Leave in the comments. I'll also share the course that I'm taking down below just in case there's any questions on it and you're curious about it. Maybe more questions will come up that way. All right, it is getting dark here in New York. Check out the skyline one more time. I mean, come on. All right, thank you all for watching this video. I'm so excited to take you on my learning journey with me for this new chapter. And I'm also so excited to hear what you plan to learn in 2024. Tech is moving faster than ever. And on one hand, it can feel exhausting. How am I ever gonna keep up? But on the other hand, having communities like I hope that we have built together here and other platforms to really bring each other up and just stay motivated and committed together, I think is the way to go. All right, thank you all for watching. I'll see you all soon. Bye everyone.